The midterms are less than a week away, so we've been looking at specific congressional races in districts across the country to better understand what's at stake in these elections and what to expect on November the 8th. Today, we're checking in on Rhode Island's 2nd District, where Republican Alan Fung is taking on Democrat Seth Magaziner. And Fung's candidacy is raising a critical question we don't ask enough. What exactly is a moderate Republican in 2022? Well, one close house race in Rhode Island next week reveals a lot, in my view, about how we talk about GOP moderation and how we grade Republican candidates on a curve. And look, we don't talk much nationally about Rhode Island politics, and that's not just due to the state's small size. In the past 16 presidential elections, Rhode Islanders have picked the Democrat 14 times, including in every election since 1984. Every statewide office, from governor to treasurer, is held by a Democrat. And neither of the state's two House seats have been held by a Republican in nearly three decades. But that might change next week. This is an opportunity for us to stand together to make sure that our voice is heard loud and clear. And that message is, it's time. It's time, folks, for this red wave to sweep Rhode Island. That's Alan Fung, the Republican nominee for Congress in Rhode Island's second district, where the retirement of longtime Democratic Congressman Jim Langevin has given the GOP a rare chance for a pickup. And polls all summer and fall have shown that Fung, the longtime mayor of Cranston, Rhode Island, leads his opponent, Democratic State Treasurer Seth Magaziner, son of Bill Clinton aide Ira. Politics in Washington has become toxic. But look, it is possible to get good things done that will help working people. What it takes is leaders with the courage to take on the big special interests. The Republicans in the state's second district are on the verge of potentially flipping a House seat that's been blue since George Bush Sr. was president. This is New England, home of Tip O'Neill, who famously said, all politics is local. And locally, Fung is known as a nice guy, a moderate. Not like those other Republicans down in D.C. or in Florida or Texas. Fung even condemned the violence at the Capitol in a tweet on January the 6th. And in friendly coffee shop interviews with reporters, he's campaigned as a different kind of conservative. A nice guy. Proud to be, you know, a Republican that is fiscally responsible, doing the right things for us. And, you know, it's, it's something that I'm honored to, you know, be on the ballot this year. So he stands against the Trump wing of his party, right? He can be a rare Republican voice against authoritarianism in Washington, D.C., correct? Not so fast. Did former President Trump cause lasting harm to the United States? Well, I can tell you, I'm not President Trump. I don't act that way. I'm not about divisiveness. He didn't answer the question, but he did remind voters that he's a nice guy who just wants to fix this Biden economy. A lot sure seems to have changed since Fung joyfully attended Donald Trump's inauguration in 2017. Or has it? Because in his run for Congress, Alan Fung has a key Republican ally. We've got a real opportunity, Alan, to um, add a seat in Congress. Now, is this personal? Because if Alan Fung wins, uh, you've uh, struck a blow right in the heart of the most, the bluest of the blue states. <laughs> you uh, know, it, Congressman it, Langevin has been elected and re-elected and re-elected. So, well, is this a... Is this a feather in your cap? What would it be to get a Republican here? It, it, it wouldn't be about a Republican. It'd be about America getting back on the right track. Yes, that's House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy practically salivating over Rhode Island's open seat. The man who wants so badly to be House Speaker, who voted to overturn the election on January the 6th, and who has vowed to disband the January 6th committee, launch a host of far-right crazy investigations, restrict abortions, and potentially shut down the government through a debt ceiling fight. That guy has a lot riding on Alan Fung, which is probably why Fung got the VIP treatment at a McCarthy fundraiser in Wyoming in August, attended by big money donors like Elon Musk. And Fung has pledged to vote for McCarthy as House Speaker. Democrats have poured tons of money into the race, arguing that Fung will be a rubber stamp for McCarthy's brand of extremism. But it's not sticking because Fung's such a nice guy. I'm not extreme, but you want to lump me into that extreme, and it doesn't fit the mold. That's why people aren't believing your message. But weirdly, 
extremists are getting a different message. Last month, the New York Times interviewed a Fung supporter named Antonio Raposo, who told the paper he wears his Let's Go Brandon hat every day. Why should you care about that? Because Raposo was part of the mob outside the Capitol protesting the election results on January the 6th. 2021. And because, according to The Times, he hosted Mr. Fung at his home in Coventry this year at an event that he said raised $25,000 for the candidate. Fung has not commented on his fundraising from Raposo. But Fung does want you to know he's a nice guy, a moderate, not an extremist, a moderate who works hand in glove with Kevin McCarthy, a moderate who takes campaign donations from Trump loving election deniers, a moderate who has no problem being part of the bigger GOP plan. That's why Alan running is more important than any time before, because he's part of a plan to put a new direction on America. Kevin McCarthy doesn't need a nice guy moderate in Congress. He needs Alan Fung's party loyalty. And so far, he has it. Thanks to the low, low bar for Republicans this year. Just sound moderate. Just talk about the economy. Just be nicer. Welcome to the new smiling face of the GOP's authoritarianism.